A very good morning to each one of you. Thank you, Dr. Binoy, for this introduction. At the outset, I wish to thank the organizer, especially Dr. Menon, for inviting me to share this topic on cognition and creativity and neuroscience perspective. Well, if we talk about, I think uh, uh, Dr. S uh, Ganesh has given a very beautiful, succinct and uh, elaborate preamble to the creativity, so it's made my job a little more easy. So if you talk about creativity, it is a mysterious quintessence of modern human society. Now, despite creativity being an integral part of human progress, it continues to reside in the mystery box, shielded with the locks of complexity and diversity. Now, b creativity, be it scientific or artistic, is an essence of human life. Be it designing a simple consumer product or a missile, I think creativity is involved in that and it is very well appreciated. However, the process of creativity remains mysterious as if you talk to the creative individuals as to how they have arrived at a product or a process, they are unable to explain to us. A simple example I would like to take from the first day's talk, Professor Matsu Zawa uh, imitated the vocalization of the chimpanzee. I thought that was very creative. Now when I asked him, probably is he a very good at imitating? Is it a learned behavior? Le did he learn it? Did he listen to it very many times? Or did, does he have love for the animal? Now he might say all of this has gone into the process. So that's what is creativity. Now if you look at the scientific study, it started in 1950s and in psychology itself there are more than 60 definitions. It can be process, it can be person, it can be product. Now if you look at the definition, the earliest definition was by Sushil Kumar Day where he says creativity is that blossoms in an individual with newer and newer forms. It is an ability to come up with ideas of new, surprising, novel and valuable, which is valuable. And it definitely is associated with fields of artificial intelligence, cognitive neuroscience, psychology and philosophy. It is not a, a specific faculty, but it is an aspect of general intelligence. As I told you, it could be person, process, there could be a need that one has to come up creatively and, and it is a product. There are different types of creativity which I have for convenience sake I have divided into artistic and scientific. Now creativity is a continuum. It is a mini C, a little C, pro C and a big C. Now what is this mini C? First time a child draws a square, it is very well appreciated by the parents. So that is 
the feeling of something the child has achieved. A little C which a peer and the family members around the person appreciates. Pro C is something where a person has achieved and is well known for that particular invention or that particular creative uh, creativity. And big C is something where many people have achieved, for example, A. Rahman, who is very well known for his music. So this is a continuum. Now, if you look at the models of creativity, and this model is very, very applicable even as of, as of date. Wall's model, where he talks about preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. I'll just go with the example. For example, you want to uh, give a good painting to a friend. Now, when you decide to do that, first thing that you, want, you would think of is you need a canvas, you need paint, you need what, what you decide what to paint. Then you go back and forth, which can, which can range from days to years. And then at some point, some illumination occurs. Yes, my friend, I remember her telling that she likes a landscape. Then you decide, yes, I should do a landscape for her and give it to her. And then you verify. You keep verifying, is this what I want to give her? Or is this what she likes? Is this the color she likes? So this process goes on and it is, it is continuous when you begin the work of creativity. So there is another model which talks about the generative phase and the exploratory phase. In generative phase, one constructs mental representation called the pre-inventive structures, which has various properties that promote creative, creative discovery. In the exploratory phase, the, the properties are to the fullest exploited during the exploratory phase in which one seeks to interpret the pre-inventive structures in a meaningful way. There are two types. One is the divergent versus the convergent. In the divergent thinking, for example, if I ask you to think in different ways a bottle is used, there may be very many people coming up with newer ideas. There may be some initially we exhaust with the natural use of the bottle. And then if I ask you to think a little further, you will come up with a very creative way of using a bottle. In a convergent thinking, you what we uh, you, what it usually does is it is associated with words by forming a compound word or a semantic association. For example, square, cardboard and open. Now if I ask you to use this word and compound, come out with a compound structure, you will tell me it is a box. So this is what is the divergent in the convergent thinking. Creativity and intelligence. Uh, well, if you look at the creative, uh, uh, creativity is not an independent uh, entity. It definitely requires expression of a higher level of intelligence. But however, when we look at people who are highly intelligent, not highly intelligent people are all creative. Now, what is important in this intelligence is the convergent thinking or the analytic modes of thinking which the intelligent test taps. So if you look at this uh, graph, it plateaus after a point. After 120 IQ, it plateaus. So it is not that high, people who are highly crea intelligent are all creative. Intelligence doesn't blossom without, uh, cre uh, creativity doesn't blossom without intelligent. Intelligent is required at a certain level. Now creativity and cognition, there is exhaustive studies carried out on creativity and cognition. Definitely not on creative people, but on young adults and college-going students. They have found that the, it is the structures that is responsible are the prefrontal cortex, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the precuneus, and the learning and memory, the perception, etc. So, uh, what we uh, the creative thinking also includes some basic process like. Definitely attention, perception, learning and memory. Creativity and personality is another aspect where people have studied and they have found that openness to experience is positively correlated with 
creativity. This is one of the many studies have uh, come out with this uh, findings that openness to experience is one of the trait which is seen in a creative individual. Now, I went through the, some of the review articles and I came across three articles. Now, I'll summarize what these three articles have said. All three articles have criticized creativity in a big way. The reason is, firstly, the creativity studies are carried out not on creative individuals. It is carried out on normal individuals who are young adults and college students. And the kind of test that be it psychometric test or the imaging is varied from one study to another study. They have summarized that 20 uh, 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 structures in the brain have mediated creativity. Each study focuses on certain aspects of it. Maybe because of the methodological the flaws that they have in their own inherent in their own studies. Because the, uh, the kind of, uh, for example, when I do a study uh, when I did a study, I used a standardized method of uh, standardized creativity test. And some person will just put the person in the scanner and ask them to read or write. So these are one aspect of the cognition that they have studied in the scanner. And that is where all these three articles have said that creativity, and that is why today creativity is not where it has to be. So what we know, it is an eminence as a de facto criteria that is in practice or actually it is, is there present in actuality but not officially established. As we know most of the retrospective studies have not been carried out on creative individuals and there is an inherent problem of de defining creativity and identifying creative individuals. And there is a dearth of empirical studies exploring the association between creativity, cognitive functions, and the brain areas. And there is inconsistent results due to the variability in the assessment tools. So what we don't know. So what makes creative artists different from other individuals? Is it the cognitive function? Is it their personality attributes? or that the creative artists, artists are very unique. And what happens when a creative artist performs a task inside the scanner? Is it because of the restriction that they face in the scanner that they are not able to come out with a creative idea? How is cre uh, creativity related to intelligence and other cognitive functions? What are the personality substrates of creative process itself? And are artists really different from people all to other people altogether? And if so, what makes them unique? Is, it, is, it, is the personality affected by the cognitive process itself? This, is, this was the guiding principle for us to carry out a research at NIMHANS looking at the brain correlates of creativity. Now, here I wish to definitely, I'm very indebted to Department of Science and Technology after a very long time, uh, after persuading for a long time, I got a funding from the Department of Science and Technology Cognitive Science Initiative, and people associated with this, we have come out with a PhD because of their funding, and, uh, Dr. Divya, who's uh, here with us, she's also looked into creativity and madness. She's done this particular uh, study even on bipolar individuals. Dr. Sanjeev Jain, who's a psychiatrist from Nimhans, Dr. Sandil Kumaran from Ains, who's an NMR specialist, and Dr. Tena Rasu, who's a biostatistician who helped us in the analysis, and uh, Dr. Rajneesh Sundar, Rajinikanth, Hari Om, and Hari Krishna Maya are all my research scholars who helped this study uh, to be carried out. So with this object, uh, with this in mind, we set out to carry out the study. What was the objective? To identify the brain areas implicated in creativity, compare the activations across two groups, that is creative group and the non-creative group, to study the creativity and cognitive functions both behaviorally as well as in, uh, through the imaging, and to study creativity and personality. Well, the, the group was very homogeneous. We matched them for 
age, education and gender. One to one matching we have done so that we get a better result. Now behavioral study was carried out on 30 individuals, 30 creative group and 30 non-creative group but whereas the imaging was done only on 20 due to the restrictions of funding. Now there are certain scales that we kept in mind. Yes, behaviorally we wanted to see the cognitive functions of these both of these groups, creative groups and the non-creative groups. How we identified the non-creative group is we gave them a a uh, questionnaire called the Creative Achievement Questionnaire where the cutoff score, there was a certain cutoff score and the, above the cutoff score was a creative person, below the cutoff non-creative and we also identified creative artists, that is the Pro-C where I sp spoke about the continuum of the creativity. The Pro-C group, we approached them and then we got them for our study. So the neuroscience, the behaviorally we administered all these, uh, uh, some questionnaires as well as, and for personality, we took a Neo5 personality scale where we administered the uh, scales as well as the uh, neuropsychological, selected neuropsychological test which addresses uh, several domains right from the mental speed to the executive functions that is the category fluency, visual fluency, verbal working memory, visual working memory, planning, set shifting, response inhibition and we went on to study their learning and memory as well. So we uh, looked into verbal learning and memory and visual learning and memory. And this was administered to both the groups, that is the creative and the non-creative group. And we did, uh, designed a paradigm, the block design paradigm, using the Wallach and Corgan creativity test. This is a very standardized test which has both verbal and visual material. The verbal material, for example, there are round, as I told you, it is a, we also address the divergent thinking. We could not do the convergent thinking. We, we went on to study the divergent thinking. So we administered this particular in the scanner while the, uh, for the uh, creative group as well as the non-creative group. Now you can see there are uh, uh, this is the visual test. Now the person has to tell us what uh, this particular line reminds him or her of. So this, uh, uh, they can tell the round things, what are, the, what are these round things that is existing and also we give an instruction to come out with something new, novel. Now the procedure for the main study, what we did was we took only the creative, the artists, not the scientific creative people, we took only the artists from various fields, from the visual field, from dancers to the musician. We also did an intelligence test. As I told you, intelligence was very important to understand creativity. We saw that the creative group were significantly higher as compared to the non-creative group. And even on neuropsychological profile, if you look at this as a test of speed, the creative, uh, the the lower the score, the better is their performance. And this is the executive functions, right from fluency, planning, set shifting, and working memory. Now you see creative people have done much better than the normal group. Even on tests of creativity, which is this is the behavioral data, where we see creative people have done much better than the non-creative group. And personality, as the uh, studies have shown, openness to experience is the one which stands out in the creative group. We also saw the openness to creativity being significantly better as compared to the non-creative group. Now if you look at the summary on all tests, in, in terms of cognition, we saw their the uh, creative group's intelligence being better, the mental speed being better attention, all the other executive functions and learning and memory being better as compared to the non-creative group and personality we saw openness to experience was standing out. Now we go into the fMRI study that we carried out. This is the voxel based morphometry where we did and what came out? We saw increased gray matter volume in the creative group in bilateral inferior frontal gyrus 
But I'll come to the next one when I talk about the fMRI itself, individual structures I will be talking about. Bilateral medial frontal gyrus, bilateral superior frontal gyrus, right posterior cingulate, bilateral precuneus, bilateral anterior cingulate, bilateral temporal gyrus, bilateral lingual gyrus, and bilateral cerebellum. Now this is the fMRI between the creative and the non-creative group. What did we see? Creativity is mediated by a network of brain regions, that is the bifrontal, medial frontal gyrus, anterior cingulate, bilateral superior parietal lobule, bilateral precuneus, bilateral superior temporal gyrus, bilateral occipital lingual gyrus, and bilateral cerebellum. Now this is the bilateral frontal gyrus. The function that it is involved is attention, verbal fluency, working memory, and episodic long-term retrieval. It is also involved in self-reflection and decision-making process. So you see, this was seen very clearly in the creative group. Anterior cingulate. It is an error direction and conflict monitoring area. And this was seen in the creative group. The precuneus. It is largely implicated in men mental imagery concerning the self with the posterior, posterior in, uh, areas involved in the episodic memory. Bilateral superior temporal gyrus. This is the one. And if you see, this is involved in bringing together remote and unconnected connections and the bilateral occipital lingual gyrus and this activation has been linked to encoding of complex images so especially the no uh, with no human faces so this was also implicated in our study cerebellum we found that it plays a very significant role in creativity through working memory and this was also highlighted in the creative group. So what we did was we came up, how did this, we wanted to develop a model how this creative process happens in, from the neuroscience perspective. First, yes, there must be general intelligence which leads to efficient processing and efficient processing leads to focus the attention on a single task and that leads to generation of many alternators because creativity requires a lot of alternators and that leads to better cognitive flexibility and which in turn has retrieval of semantic and concepts and integration takes place and that leads to mental manipulation of the alternators which has a better conflict resolution and hence there is an emergence of creative idea. This is the model that we had come up with. Now the future direction. There's so much of, as I told you initially itself, creativity is not where it has to be today. There's so much of criticism and all these criticisms are well justified and they have elucidated the pitfall in the research. What we must realize that sometimes the only way to reach somewhere is continue walking. Every time we fall, we learn more from our mistakes and move further towards our goal. Even in terms of research and in intelligence, it has taken 100 years. The same path as the creativity is going through, intelligence also have gone, has also gone through. And today we are in a better position with a better test that we can measure intelligence. And I think creativity has just crossed 50 years. Maybe we need to wait to see creativity in a better limelight in the next coming years. And the, the next idea that we are floating along with Nia's is that we want to look at, because even in the consciousness study, the studies have shown that the similar areas are implicated. So we want to see and create a consciousness, cognition, culture, and at some point, I think we need to add in the title, 
creativity. Thank you. Questions will be taken later. Questions will be taken in the discussion session. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for a very interesting talk.